with the 25 that we had for everybody to vote on, and we come up with the five. From the fans and the racers tonight, this is your Hall of Fame. Yeah, because we're not the ones, and we, me and you, Mike Van Gender and the Fair Board are not the ones that voted on it. You, the race fans, the drivers are the ones that voted. These are the five inductees. You know, Tony, also, this is something that we've talked about probably the last 15 years trying to get this started at our local speedways. I want to thank the Southern Iowa Fair, Mike Van Gendron, everybody here at the racetrack for actually stepping up and making this happen. This is something that we've needed for a long, long time. You bet. Give them a big round of applause. Southern Iowa Fair Board, Mike Van Gendron, and everybody that put this together. Boy, I'll tell you what, this is, this is tough. Our first candidate going in in the Immortal Hall of Fame lost his life in a vehicle accident. Was a very talented driver, a driver who won a lot of races, who earned respect from other drivers. He shared information, shared stories. I enjoyed watching him race and built relationships with Aaron Brown. Aaron Brown has got Michael Brown and Alyssa Brown, son and daughter, here tonight to accept the trophy along with the family and crew members, Jeff, Aaron Brown, racing career was cut short. Definitely, we've talked about it before. Aaron, the consummate racer, we grew up together. Aaron's dad, Jim, drove our family car for a number of years. When it came to playing in the backyard, whether it was Hot Wheels, bicycles, or baseball, Aaron was out there for maybe two or three minutes, and then it was straight to the garage because that didn't capture his attention. It was the race cars that Aaron wanted, and uh, we're glad to have everybody here tonight. Jim, a legend in his own right, here every Wednesday night. He's one of the turn one cronies down here in the front row, and uh, he's given it his all tonight, and we're glad to have him here with us. You bet. I'll tell you what. Race fans, put your hands together for Aaron Brown and family. You're going to make your way over. I've got a nice plaque for you. Michael Brown, Alyssa Brown, Jim Brown, all the crew guys, Mark, Hollywood, Mike McBurney, one of the car owners for many, many years. Thank you, Mike.
Kelly from Washington, Iowa. Washington race right here at the Southern Iowa Speedway. Also the Elder Raceway. Also 34 Raceway Park. Run the late model. Started out kind of in the Sportsman Series, I think. Moved into the late models and then actually run the modified. I remember you most for running the late model down at 34 Raceway Park. Uh, Jeff probably remembers some stories when you started out in the Sportsman Division, but always carrying the Banks TV logo on the side of the hot rod. Also Capper Ford. And uh, my light, light, last memories of you was actually the red car that Brandon's got on this shirt right here. Was always a sharp looking race car. Drove for, uh, for Dave, Subway Dave. And uh, just a true class act. Always like, I, I nicknamed him the legend, Denny Banks. So uh, Jeff, tell us a little bit about Denny Banks from your race in history. You know, I remember Denny was one of the first guys to campaign the uh, IMCA Modifieds in our area. Come out with the old Leaf Spring car, had many, many feature wins, and uh, passed it on down through the lineage of different drivers as it still uh, made its way through the career of the dirt tracks. But uh, Denny, former promoter at the Wablo County Fairgrounds, you gave me my first job here in auto racing, and uh, I thank you for that, and I'm still here today. But uh, definitely good competitor. You still have a racing lineage with Brandon going on. He still carries the 22. You got both your daughters. I see Marion Sherman in the back back there. Your brother-in-law, he also competed in one of your former cars out here at the Speedway campaigning the 76. So, uh, Marion, it's good to see you tonight also. Ladies and gentlemen, Hall of Fame candidate and inductee, Mr. Denny Banks. Denny, congratulations to you. You got something that sticks out in your mind, a, a championship, a win, or this tonight? Uh, this right here is probably about the best thing as far as my racing career. This is tops it all off. You bet. Congratulations. Race fans, Washington now with a legendary Denny Banks. And family.
congratulations, Bobby Greiner, Jr., the driver of the 99. And Bobby, I remember the Bobber class, where you actually started junior in high school is what they said. You moved from there into the hobby stocks, you moved into the stock car ranks, you run some late models, and I'll tell you what, it was always interesting watching you race, Bobby. They called you the Intimidator, you picked up a national championship, you sold a lot of motors, you made a lot of other people go fast, you had a heck of a crew because I guarantee it, you guys were always in the shop working on putting another motor in that race car. Jeff Kropp, I know, traveled with you for uh, uh, one year, I think, maybe a couple years, and the most memorable is actually loading out your shop to somebody that raced a stock car with you, and actually this, that night, that driver pulled in and claimed your motor, and he raced out of your shop, and I remember that one, but uh, Jeff, tell us a little bit about Bobby Grinder Jr. You know, I think it all happened once upon a time ago down at the Wapello County Fairgrounds, uh, about 1990, I'm going to guess, maybe a little sooner than that. Uh, had a couple of demolition derby cars, and uh, big classic cars took them the big half mile, and you started out your first oval race in the demolition derby car, and a lot of your competitors will say that you finished your career in the demolition derby car. But that's not actually the case, Robert. You was a rough and tumble competitor, and you took your racing very seriously. Love you, hate you, or hug you. You're a champion, and you'll always be an IOMCA champion in, uh, in the stock car division, and we thank you for uh, putting Southern Iowa Speedway on the map for the stock car division. Robert, something I gotta say, Watching you run your last race, and it's always tough to hang the helmet up. You got two kids that you're spending a lot of time with. But that night I watched you, or that afternoon I watched you pull up. You did probably one of the best burnouts I've ever seen. And it's always tough to call it your racing career. But you know what? Pretty prestigious to win a national championship, to accumulate over 100 feature wins. Because not very many drivers, some drivers always want to just have that first feature win. But congratulations to you. Is there something that sticks out in your mind out of all of your racing career that you want to share with us? Well, I don't know. There's so many stories. But one of my fondest memories here at Oski is just, you know, it's not actually the racing. It's after the races, the people coming over you know, the one to talk racing. Whether they love me or hate me, they come to the trailer, they bought the shirts, they told the stories. Uh, I'm gonna tell a quick story. One night I was by Randy Schroeder's trailer and Terry Schroeder's an instigator, kinda like I am, and there's this little boy there. And Terry started asking me questions and I'd take my driving suit off and um, he was naming off favorite drivers with this little boy about five years old. And he went down, Randy Schroeder, oh, I like him. Terry Schroeder, oh, yeah, I yeah, like him. You know, and he went down, some of the others, you know. And finally, I was standing right next to this five-year-old boy, you know, and Terry goes, what about Bobby Reiner? He goes, my mommy hates him. My daddy 